Tensions are flaring up in a pair of former Soviet republics, Azerbaijan and Armenia, in the disputed area of Nagorno-Karabakh. For more detail, we're going to speak with Mark Sloboda, based in Moscow. He's an analyst and historian, and we spoke with him via Skype on Tuesday. Mark, welcome. Pleasure to have you with us. Don, thanks for having me. So, another war. Talk to us. Okay, so Armenia and Azerbaijan, for what you, for those of you who don't know, two small countries in the South Caucasus, a, a hilly, uh, mountainous region between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Um, the two, uh, the area has been riven with conflict, basically since the time of the ancient Roman and Persian empires. Uh, East and West was fighting, uh, you know, and having most of the political intrigues between the Roman and and the Persian uh, empires in, in, in its very in, various incarnations, uh, you know, over that. Uh, for you know much of of their common history and the conflicts have continued uh today they have assumed a largely ethno uh political uh nature armenia is orthodox christian and um uh azerbaijan is uh, muslim they were both part of the Soviet Union, and that was probably the longest period of peace between the two of them. But when the Soviet dis Union dissolved itself in 1991, conflict almost immediately resumed uh, between the two uh, regions. Um, Armenia, back in the 90s, won a war at that time um, and occupied much of um, Western Azerbaijan. And they did that up until a couple of years ago, right? So practically two decades. And it has to be said, uh, when Armenia ruled Azerbaijan, they ethnically cleansed it. They burned down all the mosques and uh, all the Azerbaijani left or were driven out. Um, at heart of the, the conflict today uh, is an Armenian enclave um, uh, that is a small area that is all ethnic Armenians in a series of uh, um, um, a hilly region called uh, Nagorno-Karabakh by Azerbaijan and Artsakh by Armenia. Um, there was a brief war fought uh, just a couple of years ago, again, Azerbaijan now has the upper hand. Uh, they've had um, uh, oil uh, and gas revenues, um, and they have built up a fairly powerful military um, with weapons from uh, Russia. Both sides get weapons from Russia, but as well as um, Israel uh, and Turkey. Uh, um, they won that war. They took back all of the occupied territories, uh, driving all of the Armenians out. Um, and uh, the prime minister of Armenia, uh, Pashinyan, was forced to sign a humiliating surrender uh, terms. Um, it has to be said that Armenia, that under Pashinyan, has not fulfilled all of the terms that he agreed to. Uh, in particular, uh, for those of you who don't know, Azerbaijan, as small as it is, is actually a divided country. Uh, with Armenia in the middle. On the other side of Armenia is a, a, a Azerbaijani exclave, if you will, a small uh, extraterritorial extension of Azerbaijan nestled up against Turkey. Um, and um, as part of the surrender terms, uh, the peace terms, Pashinyan agreed to an economic transit corridor across southern Armenia, something that would be called the Zangazur Corridor, that would l economically link uh, Azerbaijan not only with uh, its uh, Nakhchivan, its uh, southern part, you know, separated by Armenia, but also with Turkey. Um, and Azerbaijan has very good relations with Turkey. Uh, on the other hand, Armenia had, historically has good relations with Russia. Russia has always served as kind of the protector of Armenia uh, for hundreds of, of years, uh, but also good relations with Iran, strangely enough, because um, Iran is worried about their Azerbaijani minority 
uh, in the northwest of that country on the border with Azerbaijan uh, and that the government in Azerbaijan, uh, you know, may have or may do things to stir up uh, ethnic tensions in Iran. Yes, and primi- Azerbaijan and Armenia each have a border with Iran. Yeah. Yes, yes, they both do. Uh, Armenia is very small, it must be said. Um, now, the prime minister of Armenia uh, for the last several years, Pashinyan, he's pro-Western. He came to power as a result of street protests and disputed election results uh, originally, uh, something long you know, understood uh, to, to happen in the region, uh, color revolutions uh, and the like. And, and certainly U.S. influence was, was thick. Uh, in this as well. But the problem is Armenia is a small landlocked country. Um, it has not done as well economically as um, uh, Azerbaijan has because it has no valuable natural resources. And it's uh, locked by Georgia to the north, uh, uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan for most of the rest of its border who are non-traders. Turkey sides with um, uh, Azerbaijan and has lots of historical enmity uh, with Armenia um, and only that small uh, area with with Iran. Um, Right now, Azerbaijan is uh, angry that Armenia has not fulfilled all the terms of the surrender agreement that they had that was brokered by Russia as uh, with Russian peacekeepers uh, in this Armenian enclave Nagorno in in Azerbaijan territory um, uh, where Russia has has had peacekeepers stationed Russia has always tried to balance relations between the two but Armenia is actually part of the Russian led collective security treaty organization a very rough analog of NATO in the space. Azerbaijan is not. Um, It seems that Azerbaijan is taking moves. Uh, They've declared an anti-terrorist operation, quote unquote. They are going to forcibly take control of Nagorno-Karabakh. That seems very likely. Pashinyan is screaming that Russian peacekeepers should do something, and that they're peacekeepers, right? Not (laughs) peace uh, uh, makers, right? It's a, a small force there. Uh, They don't have that capability. Plus, Pashinyan a few months ago said he was ready to recognize Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh, as part of Azerbaijan. And when he said that, and it was viewed with with contempt by the Russian rest by the rest of Armenian politics and society, and right. he never followed through on it. But Russia, knowing that he's trying to move closer to Washington, said they changed their position and said that a Karabakh Armenians need to accept Azerbaijani rule. So the U.S. is trying to hedge in. Uh, to Russian influence in the region. So is Turkey uh, with Azerbaijan. Meanwhile, Russia, distracted by events in Ukraine, does not seem inclined to step into this conflict at all, but not over at least Nagorno-Karabakh. So it seems like Nagorno-Karabakh will either come under Azerbaijani rule or far more likely be effectively ethnically cleansed and most of the Armenians will leave uh, you know, if this conflict continues right now uh, and for, for mainland Armenia right now, um, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh authorities have called for uh, a ceasefire and they've asked Azerbaijan to stop attacking. Uh, it remains to be seen if they will do so. Yeah. So looks, I guess maybe next week we'll catch up and see what happens. But it does look like some, somebody was trying to light a match again. Yes. And just looking at a map. Um, you know, the, the, it looks like there's one war trying to be lit there, and uh, I hope it doesn't catch fire. So, Mark, thank you so much for your time mm-hmm. uh, again, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you again next week. Thanks for having me. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.